I'm Lee Berger. I'm from the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa, and I'm the Philip Tobias Chair for Human Origins. I study ancient human evolution, so I particularly explore for fossils, discover them, put together multidisciplinary teams, and describe uh, some of our most ancient relatives. And I've been involved in two major discoveries, discovery of Australopithecus sediba uh, in 2008, and in 2013, the discovery of a new species, Homo naledi. So what has happened with these new discoveries is we went through a period in paleoanthropology where we thought we had it all figured out. We would talk about trees and bushes, and we would explain human evolution as if it was a ladder. And anyone who's taken a biological anthropology class will know that as we talked about an early hominid like Anamensis gives rise to Afarensis, gives rise to Homo habilis, to Erectus, to Homo sapiens. Um, what these new discoveries have done is challenged the idea that the story of human origins is simple. It, they show that there's a great deal of diversity, there were many experiments going on, and that we really don't know very much right now about human origins, except that it was extremely complex, and that, in fact, we're like every other animal. We have a complex, deep, diverse history. So I grew up as uh, in a very rural environment in, in southeast Georgia, in a place where if you were a bright kid, you ended up being a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or a preacher. And uh, none of those suited me, and I it was it wasn't until I went to university and was very privileged to get a scholarship to university, I came from a very middle class uh, background, that, that I realized that there were these, these other occupations out there. And one of them was paleontology and geology, which I was fascinated with. And then I finally found paleoanthropology. And I was intrigued with the story of us. I was also intrigued with the idea that, that we all came from Africa, that we were originally an African species and that all of humanity uh, could be defined as this, this very tight-knit group out of Africa. And that stunned me. I'd never learned that in rural Georgia. It was the last thing that, that I'd ever realized until that sort of a epiphany through uh, education occurred to me. Um, I became enamored with Africa. I became enamored with the, the search for human origins in Africa, and that took me to Africa. And uh, it's been an extraordinary adventure ever since. I've lived all my life in Africa, all my adult life in Africa now, and so much so that, that I've, I've vested everything I have in there, in the developments in Africa, including becoming a South African citizen as part of that. I've been very privileged, this association, but this entire science and field has been very good to me. And I feel privileged to be in it, and I feel privileged to participate, in, and I've been privileged in other ways, through prizes and awards and recognition that have not been my doing, that's been done by an entire team of scientists many, if not most of them, women. And I want to give something back. I think the first thing is critically important to understand that when I put a Facebook ad out looking for skinny scientists who could, that had the skills to, to fit down this, it was because women scientists had earned these skills and had these skills that more than 80% of the applicants were young women. When I selected, I selected on merit alone. And it just happened that the six that were finally selected were women. In fact, one of the mythologies was that that was some kind of gimmick. And I can actually throw that out the window because what most people don't know is that the first selection was five women and a young man. But that young man had lied about his dimensions and his ability to go through the space. And the seventh candidate just happened to be a young woman. So those were, I like to use the term that those were extraordinary explorers and scientists who just happened to be women. I grew up in the age when paleoanthropology was practically all male. When I first entered this field, uh, if you went to a meeting, uh, it would be 95% white male. And the science is better now as we are more diverse, there are more women, there are more people of color, there are more people from disadvantaged communities, and the science we're producing is more authentic and better and more detailed. 
So if you ask me what is diversity bringing, I say look at the science right now. It makes better science. How can mentors be better? What they can do is they can learn and listen about the backgrounds and cultures and where people come from so that they have some understanding of the disadvantages that come at the same point because they certainly will have an understanding of their own privilege or at least they may become aware of their own privilege in the course of doing that. But secondly, they can be there as mentors to watchdog. When they see others exercising power against advancement, diversity, uh, in whatever ways, and there are many ways that ma manifest, they can use that power to step in and stop it.